Her wife and children did little to curb the carnal appetites of Prince Aegon the Elder. If Mushroom is to be believed, he fathered two bastard children the same year as his twins, a boy on a girl whose maidenhood he'd won at an auction on the Street of Silk and a girl by one of his mother's handmaidens. Later, in 127 AC, Princess Helena gave Aegon his second son, who was given a dragon's egg and named Maelor. Queen Alicent's other sons had been growing older as well. Prince Aemond, despite the loss of his eye, had become a proficient and dangerous swordsman under the tutelage of Sir Criston Cole, but remained a wild and willful child, hot-tempered and unforgiving. His little brother, Prince Daron, was the most popular of the Queen's sons, as clever as he was courteous, and most comely as well. When he turned 12 in 126 AC, Daron was sent to Old Town to serve as a cupbearer and squire to Lord Hightower. That same year, across Blackwater Bay, the sea snake, Corlys Valarian, was stricken by sudden fever. As he took to his bed, surrounded by maesters, the issue arose as to who should succeed him as the Lord of the Tides, a master of Driftmark, should the sickness claim him. With both his true-born children dead, by law, his lands and titles should pass to his eldest grandson, Jacaris. But since Jace would presumably ascend the Iron Throne after his mother, Princess Rhaenyra urged her father-in-law to name instead her second son, Lucerys. Lord Corlys also had a half-dozen nephews, however, and the eldest of them, Sir Vaymond Valerian, protested that the inheritance by right should pass to him, on the grounds that Rhaenyra's sons were bastards, sired by Harwin Strong. The princess was not slow to answer this charge. She dispatched Prince Daemon to seize Sir Vaymond, had his head removed and fed his remains to her dragon, Syrax. Even this did not end the matter. Sir Vaymond's younger cousin fled to King's Landing with his wife and sons, there to cry for justice and place their claims before the king and queen. King Viserys had grown extremely fat and red-faced, and scarcely had the strength to mount the steps to the Iron Throne. The king heard them out in a stony silence, then ordered their tongues removed. You were warned, he declared, as they were being dragged away. I will hear no more of these lies. As he was descending the Iron Throne, Viserys stumbled and reached out to right himself, and sliced his left hand open to the bone on the jagged blades protruding from the Iron Throne. Though Grand Maester Melos washed the cut out with boiled wine, and bound up the hand with strips of linen soaked in healing ointments, a fever soon followed, and many feared the king might die. Only the arrival of Princess Rhaenyra from Dragonstone turned the tide, for with her came her own healer, Maester Geraldus, who acted swiftly to remove two fingers from the king's hand to save his life. Though much weakened by his ordeal, King Viserys soon resumed to rule. To celebrate his recovery, a feast was held on the first day of 127 AC. The princess and the queen were both commanded to attend with all their children. In a show of amity, each woman wore the other's colours, and many declarations of love were made, much to the king's great pleasure. Prince Daemon raised the cup to Sir Otto Hightower and thanked him for his service as hand. Sir Otto in turn spoke with the prince's courage, while Alison's children and Rhaenyra's greeted one another with kisses and broke bread together at table. Or at least, that's what the court records show. Late in that evening, after King Viserys has departed the feast, as his grace still tired easily, Mushroom tells us that Aemond rose to toast his Valarian nephews, speaking in mock admiration of their brown hair, brown eyes and strength. I have never known anyone so strong as my sweet nephews, he ended. So let us drain our cups to these three strong boys. Still later, the full reports Aegon the Elder took offence when Jacaris Valarian asked his wife Helena for a dance. Angry words were exchanged, and the two princes might have come to blows if not for the intervention of the Kingsguard. Whether King Viserys was ever informed of these incidents, we do not know, but Princess Rhaenyra and her sons returned to their own seat on Dragonstone the next morning. After the loss of his fingers, Viserys Targaryen never sat upon the Iron Throne again. Thereafter, he shunned the throne room altogether, preferring to hold court in his solar, and later in his bedchamber surrounded by Maesters, Septons, and his faithful fool Mushroom the only man who could still make him laugh. Death visited the court again a short time later when Grand Maester Melos collapsed one night whilst he was climbing the serpentine steps. His had always been a moderating voice in council, forever urging calm and compromise whenever issues rose between the blacks and the greens. To the king's distress, however, the passing of the man he called my trusted friend only served to provoke a fresh dispute between the factions. Princess Rhaenyra wanted Maester Geraldus, who long served her on Dragonstone, to replace Melos. It was only his healing skills that had saved the king's life when Viserys cut his hand on the throne, she claimed. Queen Alicent, however, insisted that the princess and her maester had mutilated Viserys unnecessarily. Had they not meddled, 
she claimed Grand Maester Melos would have surely essayed the king's fingers as well as his life. She urged the appointment of one Maester, Alphador, presently in the service at the High Tower. Viserys, beset from both sides, chose neither, reminding both the princess and the queen that the choice was not his to make. The Citadel of Old Town chose the Grand Maester, not the crown. In due time, the Conclave bestowed the chain of office upon Archmaester Orwell, one of their own. King Viserys did seem to recover some of his old vigour once the new Grand Maester arrived at court. Certain Eustace tells us that this was the result of prayer, but most believe that Orwell's potions were more effectuous than the leechings Melos had preferred. But such recoveries proved short-lived. Gout, chest pains and shortness of breath continued to trouble the king. In the final years of his reign, as his health failed, Viserys left even more of the governance of the realm to his hand and the small council. At this point, we ought to look at the members of the small council on the eve of the great events of 129 AC, for they were to play a large role in all that follows. The king's hand remains Sir Hotto Hightower, father of the queen and uncle to the lord of Old Town, Grand Maester Orwell, while the newest member of the council, and was thought to favour neither the blacks nor the greens. The commander of the king's guard remains Sir Kristen Cole, and in him, Rhaenyra Targaryen had a bitter foe. The aged Lord Lyman Beesbury was master of coin, in which capacity he had served almost uninterrupted since the days of Jaehaerys. The youngest councillors were the Lord of Admiral and Master of Ships, Sir Tylan Lannister, brother to the Lord of Casterly Rock, and the Lord Confessor and Master of Whisperers, Laris Strong, Lord of Harrenhal. Lord Jasper Wilde, Master of Law, known amongst the small folk as Ironrod, completed the council. As the Seven Kingdoms welcomed the 129th year after Aegon's conquest, with bonfires, feasts and tourneys, King Viserys Targaryen was growing ever weaker. His chest pains had grown so severe that he could no longer climb a flight of steps, and had to be carried about on the Red Keep in a chair. By the second moon of the year, the king had lost all appetite, and was ruling the realm in his bed, that is, when he felt strong enough to rule at all. Most days, he preferred to leave matters of state into the hand, Sir Otto Hightower. On Dragonstone, meanwhile, Princess Rhaenyra was once again great with child. She too took to her bed. On the third day of the third moon of 129 AC, Princess Helena brought her three children to visit with the king in his chambers. The twins, Jaehaerys and Jaehaera, were six years old, their brother Maelor only two. The king gave the babe a pearl ring of his finger to play with, and told the twins the story of how their great-great-grandsire and namesake Jaehaerys had flown his dragon north to the wall to defeat a vast host of wildlings, giants and warks. Though the children had heard the story a dozen times before, they listened attentively. Afterwards, the king sent them away, pleading weariness and tightness in his chest. Then Viserys of House Targaryen, the first of his name, King of the Andals, the Roinar, and the First Men, Lord of the Seven Kingdoms and Protector of the Realm, closed his eyes and went to sleep. He never woke. He was 52 years old and had reigned over most of Westeros for 26 years. That is when the storm broke and the dragons danced.